Hey guys and welcome to another very XU. Why is the footage so grainy? What the hell? Let's fix that up. Chances are the reason that you ended up with grainy low quality footage is that when you were filming your scene you didn't have enough light. When there isn't a lot of light in your scene and your camera is left on automatic, it will automatically increase the ISO value which will make the sensor of your camera more sensitive to light, therefore allowing your camera to bring you a brighter and more well exposed image. However, increasing the ISO value not only makes your camera more sensitive to light, it also makes it more sensitive to noise. Therefore, the higher your ISO value is, the more noisy your footage will be. Ideally, you always want to have a lot of light in your scene so that you can keep your ISO value and the noise levels in your footage low. However, that may not always be possible. Fortunately, even if your footage ended up a little bit grainy, it's actually pretty easy to clean that out using Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. And in this beginner level tutorial, I want to show you how. But now, before I keep on talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a sequence set up here that contains the clip from the intro of this tutorial. And if I zoom in on my footage, you can see that this is very, very noisy. I deliberately filmed this clip with very little light and an extremely high ISO value. I think I was way past 2000 to make for a good example of how to remove noise in Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. Now, unfortunately, without any third-party plugins, you can't remove noise in Adobe Premiere Pro. Therefore, we are going to take this clip into Adobe After Effects and remove the noise in there. There are quite a number of different ways to do this, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, let's simply export this clip from Premiere Pro. So let's come to the beginning, press I to mark our in point, come to the end, press O to mark the out point. So now this is the part we're going to export from our sequence. Press Ctrl M to bring up the export dialog. In here you can configure your export settings, but I've covered most of this in my absolute beginner tutorial for Premiere Pro. Personally, I like to use the H.264 codec, match source at a high bitrate. Let's define an output name and let's call this one grainy footage. Because I want to retain all of the detail and all of the noise for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to come down into my video settings and jack the bitrate up to the maximum. And I'm going to ensure that my use maximum render quality checkboard is enabled and then simply export this clip from Premiere Pro. Once you've exported your clip, come over into Adobe After Effects and let's import our footage. Simply click onto the empty area in your project panel and then locate and select your grainy footage clip and let's hit import. Now, if you simply want to follow along with this tutorial, I'm going to put a download link for this file in the description of the video. However, I highly recommend that you just film your own footage for this tutorial. Just use a camera, use your phone, shoot in low light, and I guarantee you it's going to have a whole lot of ugly noise. Then simply bring that file into the project and follow along with this tutorial. Let's start out by creating a new composition. So let's drag the grainy footage mp4 file onto the new composition icon. This is the clip we exported from Adobe Premiere Pro and because we exported it with maximum bitrate, if we zoom in, all of the detail, but also all of the noise is still here. Let me quickly disable the audio for this layer because I don't want that to interfere with the recording of this tutorial. And let's deal with this humongously ugly noise. Usually, if your footage turns out this bad, I would probably recommend reshooting it. But for the sake of this tutorial and just being a great example for removing noise in Adobe After Effects, this clip is perfect. In order to remove noise from your footage in Adobe After Effects, simply come up into your Effects and Presets panel and search for the Remove Grain effect. Let's grab this effect and apply it to our grainy footage layer. And let's zoom out a little bit. By default, the remove grain effect will just show you a little preview window. You can actually click in the middle here and drag this square around. And this is just a preview region of showing you how your footage would look with the grain removed. And you can see that inside this square, there's a whole lot less noise. In order to apply this effect to your entire footage, simply come into the settings for the remove grain effect and change the viewing mode from preview over to final output. Obviously, this will render a whole lot slower and you can see that this does take a few seconds even on my computer to calculate through. But it has removed a huge amount of noise. So if I disable the remove grain effect just for a second, so just check out my shirt and maybe the seat behind me and my face. 
you can see there's a huge amount of noise and just by enabling this effect with the default settings, a huge amount of noise has already been removed. Let's zoom back out, rewind and preview the video. And that looks a whole lot better already. If you really wanted to, you could just stop here and export your video and it would probably look all right. But if you want more than all right, if you want good or maybe great, you probably have to dig into and tweak some of these settings. Let's zoom back in, rewind our composition and preview this at full resolution. And you can see that while we got rid of a lot of the fine grained noise, you can see this weird blocky noise pattern going on. The reason that is happening is because the remove grain effect by default will process every frame independently and because the pattern of noise just changes slightly from frame to frame, you end up with this really weirdly blocky artifacts on top of it. The easiest way to remove this weird blocky noise is to come into the remove grain effect and open up and enable temporal filtering. Again, let's rewind a little bit and play this back. And you can see that actually doesn't look too bad. When you enable temporal filtering, the remove grain effect will take consecutive frames into account and blur over this blocky noise pattern that occurs when you're looking at every single frame independently. However, using the default settings for temporal filtering can leave you with a few strange artifacts. Let's just come up to my face and let's find a moment where I'm moving my face. And you can see that my face has these weird artifacts along the edges which are caused by this temporal filtering. So if I disable temporal filtering, you don't see the artifacts, but obviously there's then the blocky noise. Enabling it introduces these weird artifacts. So personally, I like to play around a little bit with the motion sensitivity. And I usually like to jack this up just a little bit. If you bring this up to one, the temporal filtering will essentially have no effect. So I like to bring this in just a little bit to maybe 0.95. Now it's not going to get rid of all of the artifacts, but that's a little bit of the price that you pay for removing noise from footage, especially on footage that is this noisy. So I think this is actually not too bad. This is kind of a nice middle ground, but let's go through a few of the other settings for the remove grain effect so you can understand them and tweak them as needed. Let me find a frame where my face is nice and visible. This one isn't too bad. And if I temporarily disable the remove grain effect, you can see there's a whole lot more noise, but there's also a little bit more detail in my face. So by removing noise and grain, you will smoothen out a few things. And you may think, oh, it's actually not too bad. It makes me look younger and my skin smoother. But if you overdo it, it can start looking a bit artificial because you will start to lose detail in your footage a little bit. So what I'm going to do now, let's come into the remove grain effect and change our view mode from final output back to preview, just because it's going to go a whole lot faster. I'm going to move the preview window over my face because that's where I've got most of the detail that I can't want to keep, but also where we will see the most effect as we're tweaking all of these settings. Obviously, you can open up the settings for the preview region and kind of tweak this to your liking. Maybe I'll make the region just a little bit bigger so it kind of covers most of my face. Yep, that's not too bad. Let's collapse that again. And let's open up the noise reduction settings. This is where the main settings, and this is really what you should tweak first. I should probably have done that even before I enable temporal filtering. So noise reduction level, obviously this is the strength of the effect. If I reduce this to zero, I'm essentially canceling out the noise reduction effect, but I'm still getting a little bit because I've still got temporal filtering enabled. If I disable that as well, then obviously my remove grain effect has no effect whatsoever. But I'm going to leave temporal filtering on. And as I jack up this noise reduction, you can see that more and more noise gets removed from my face. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. But if I overdo this, I'm literally starting to lose all of the detail and I'm getting really blurry and this kind of looks really horribly ugly. So you really don't want to be overdoing this. Maybe I'll leave it at around one for now. Number of passes is how many passes this remove grain effect will process your image. This will give you a bit higher quality, but it makes the process a whole lot slower. And there will be a point where increasing the number of passes will no longer make a difference. So usually you want to slowly jack this up and find the point where it still makes a difference. Most of the time, quite honestly, I just leave this on default. And your mode can be either multi-channel or single channel. Now, if I open up the channel noise reduction, you can see that you can adjust the noise reduction levels for your red, green and blue channels separately. And the reason that is, if I zoom back out a little bit and at the bottom of the preview window, you'll find these little three colored circles. And in here, you can select the channel that you're viewing. So let's view just the red channel. And there's quite a bit of noise in the red channel. Let's swap over to the green channel. And you can see there's noise in the green channel, but this noise is a whole lot finer. So the noise in these channels might be quite different. 
the blue channel noise is really blocky. So you can actually apply different noise reductions to the different channels separately. You can get a better result, but obviously it requires a bit more tweaking and understanding of your footage. Most of the time I just stay on RGB. I kind of don't touch these. I just play with the main noise reduction. But again, just so you know what it does, you can tweak this in any way you want. Let's zoom back in on my face. And let's deal with the fact that the remove grain effect has knocked out quite a bit of detail. Now, first off, it is important to understand that the remove grain effect will essentially try to identify the pattern of noise in your footage to efficiently erase it. Let me zoom back out and let's change the viewing mode from preview over to noise samples. You will see a number of squares on your footage and these are the sample points that the remove grain effect uses to identify what the noise in your footage looks like. In the remove grain effect, you can open up the sampling settings and by default, sample selection will be set to automatic. So the remove grain effect will try to pick some samples that are fairly representative of the noise in your video. Personally, I think you will get much better results if you change your sample selection from automatic over to manual. And you will see that most of the squares in your footage have disappeared and you've just got one left in the center. However, if you click and drag, this is actually now all eight sample points collapsed into one location because the remove grain effect will now expect you to manually position your sample points. Personally, I think eight samples for manual selection is a bit high. Maybe I'll change this down to five. So I've just got five squares left and I can actually increase the sample size as well. So I can kind of push these out or in. Usually I like to leave this on the default of 24 and you now want to select these points and by the way, if you feel like you can't select these, you're just moving your footage about, make sure you have the remove grain effect selected. So you can see the anchor points for your samples and then just drag these into areas of the footage where there is a lot of noise. So on the speaker here, there's a whole lot of noise. And I think on my shirt, especially there's a huge amount of noise, just really ugly. So I'll just reposition these points right down there and maybe I'll drag one onto the chair as well. And then once you're happy, let's change the viewing mode from noise samples back to preview. Let's zoom back in on my face and it looks like it's gotten even more blurry and that is because now we're using samples that we've defined. So the remove grain effect will remove a slightly different pattern of noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the noise reduction. So this actually works just much more efficiently to knock out the noise without me having to jack the noise reduction up quite so high. So maybe I'll just go 0.4, actually looks pretty good. So let's move this over the seat. Ah, that looks so much better in terms of just removing the noise without really affecting too much of the detail. So highly recommend use manual mode for your sampling and find some points that are really representative of the noise in your footage to knock it out, but it's still a little bit on the soft side. So let's bring back some detail into my face. Let's return to the remove grain effect and let's open up the fine tuning settings. And in here you will find a number of settings that give you more control over how this effect works. Chroma suppression is great if your noise has different colors. So for example, you can see that some of the noise is a bit greenish, a little bit reddish. I hope that comes through when you're watching this video, but there's kind of like a bit color patches here. So if I move this over to the right side, I can still see a little bit of color. So I can actually bring up the chroma suppression and it'll actually knock out more of that color difference in my noise. So maybe I'll bring this up to two. I don't want to go overboard. And again, let's check out the face. Yep, that's actually still about the same. And more importantly, I can increase this texture setting and that will bring back some of the detail into my face. So let's increase texture. And you can see that's kind of adding a lot of the creases and detail back into my face. If you go overboard on this and you jack this all the way back up, you're going to lose a lot of the remove grain effect itself because you kind of bring all of that grain back in. So you don't want to overdo it. So let's push this up to maybe 0.6 is actually not too bad. That's kind of bringing back a little bit of the detail without really reintroducing too much of the noise. Let's check out the chair here, maybe a little bit less. Maybe I go 0.35 or 0.4 on the texture setting to get some of the detail back without bringing back too much of the noise. And again, it's a lot of tweaking and trial and error to figure out what works best for your footage and gives you the best results. Noise size bias allows you to determine whether you want to knock out very small noise or very big noise. Personally, I usually leave this on default. I don't tweak this too much. And cleaning solid areas for that, let's change the view mode back to final output. And let's just zoom back out a little bit. The more you increase this setting, the more the remove grain effect will kind of smoothen out flat or even looking surfaces. 
However, overdoing this will introduce a lot of glow, especially around the phone. You can really see how the edges of the phone are glowing and the edges here are kind of getting blurry on my shoulder and I'm introducing a whole bunch of blurriness. Not a big fan of this. Usually, I, if I increase this, I might go very, very light on this, maybe 0.1. Personally, I like to be quite careful with this just so I don't lose all of the detail and make the edges bleed color into each other. It just looks really weird. Finally, another way you can sharpen up your image, hopefully without reintroducing too much noise into your footage, is to use the unsharp mask. The unsharp mask is actually used for sharpening. The reason it's called unsharp is because it uses a blurred out inverted image to kind of do the sharpening process, but unsharp mask is for sharpening and I actually really like using this in general in Premiere Pro for a lot of my fine tuning and sharpening of the image. I think it usually does a pretty nice job. So in here you simply have amount, radius and threshold. I'm not going to go into too much technical detail. I usually like to just jack the amount up a little bit just to kind of sharpen this up and you can see that it's quite a lot of detail coming back into my face just by bringing up the amount a little bit. Obviously, if you go too far, you're going to get this over sharpened, really ugly image. So let's not do that. Maybe 0.5 is actually not too bad. So this is at zero. I'm still a little bit blurred out on my frowny eyebrow up there. So let's maybe bring this up to, let's say, 0.5. And you can see some of the detail coming back. And this is actually not too bad. So this is what the footage looks like without the room of grain effect. It's just blocky and ugly. It looks like a video from the 80s maybe. And with the remove grain effect, a whole lot of that is knocked out. Obviously, as I said, because this is a pretty extreme example with quite a lot of noise, there are going to be some concessions in terms of losing a little bit of detail and quality on your footage when you're knocking out all of that grain. But let's zoom back out, but just a little bit so we can still see what noise is left and play back our cleaned up footage. And that's all there is to it. As I mentioned, ideally you always want to film with a lot of light like I've added now to keep your ISO value and your noise load to begin with. But even if you have a little bit of noise, it's pretty easy to clean that up. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please show your support by liking, favoriting and sharing it with the world. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials just like this one. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.